It's a great pleasure to me and for me to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Stanley Kraft, who is going to talk to us about the impacts of pandemic on the global spatial organization of air transportation. They're also a timely topic, but mind the rising concerns of the variants of Omicron. Uh, Dr. Kraft is Associate Professor and Transportation Geographer in the Department of Geography at the University of uh, South Bohemia in Czech Republic. His main research area is transport geography, spatial mobility studies, spatial interactions, modeling, and settlements and regional systems. He also is the scientific, uh, the scientific secretary of the National Geographic Society of Czech Republic. He received his PhD in regional geography and regional development from the Maastricht University in 2012. So during this uh, well, now, if you have any questions, please type them or write them down in the Q&A chat box, which is located at the bottom of the Zoom interface. And I will repeat them for you uh, during the Q&A session. You can also use in the function called raise your hand, uh, also on the bottom of the Zoom interface. And I will also put you on Mac uh, during the session, Q&A session, so you can ask question to Bradley. So maybe let's welcome Dr. Kraft and uh, his audience. <clears throat> okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks uh, for this for this uh, start. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, greetings from uh, the Czech Republic. Greetings from uh, Europe. And I'm sending, uh, of course, my my regards to all of you in Miami. Um, welcome to my talk uh, uh, on the impact of, uh, uh, of COVID-19 uh, pandemic on air transportation and uh, I hope the connection is good and uh, you can hear my voice. Uh, I would like to start by thanking to uh, Hanley uh, for uh, this invitation. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, this lecture uh, was originally supposed to be face-to-face, uh, -face, but unfortunately I had to postpone my, my uh, visit to Miami because I uh, received a, a positive PCR test uh, last week uh, before I left. Uh, so for this reason, uh, this lecture is being held online, but I'm sure we can, we can make it uh, together. Uh, first of all, um, uh, I would like to apologize for my English. Uh, as you can hear, uh, English is not my first language, but uh, I promise I will do my best that you will understand me. Uh, I admit it's a great challenge for me to, to give in a lecture in English to you as uh, native speakers. Well, uh, now a few words about me. Uh, my name is Stanislav Kraft. Uh, I am an associate professor uh, of human geography and research at uh, the University of South Bohemia uh, in the Czech Republic. Our university is located in a beautiful city called České Budějovice. Uh, it's, uh, this city is uh, connected with the uh, maybe you know the, the um, uh, Czech brewery uh, called Budvar. Uh, and it's uh, very similar to Budweiser, uh, which is uh, which is uh, typical for for US. There are some mitigations, uh, sorry, litigations uh, between uh, Budweiser and, and Czech Budvar, but uh, that doesn't matter now. Uh, our university is rather a smaller university, I think. Uh, currently, there are um, about ten thousand uh, students uh, studying here uh, now. Uh, my research interest uh, is uh, are mainly in transportation geography, and uh, uh, you can see, of course, my CV or on my website on on ResearchGate and, and so on. Uh, my today's talk will focus on uh, on a topical and still under research uh, issue called, uh, or namely, how the COVID-19 pandemic affected uh, air transportation. Um, I think it's a very interesting and important topic, and uh, not only for geographers, uh, because many scientific uh, disciplines will uh, or could participate on, on the research of, of this uh, issue. Um, 
a number of studies have been published yet uh, about uh, or concerning this, this issue. Uh, but uh, uh, however, most of them uh, were, were focused on, uh, on a general effects of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, uh, and on the contrary, there were many, many studies uh, that uh, they were published. They uh, overemphasized the local efforts of, of the pandemic. Uh, my approach is a little bit different. Uh, my approach is uh, more general and it uh, seeks the uh, general patterns, uh, spatial patterns of, uh, of uh, uh, the changes within the, the air transportation in times of COVID-19. Well, uh, my approach is based on, on, on the brand new empirical research uh, they, and uh, these results, uh, they uh, don't have been uh, published uh, yet. So, uh, dear friends, you are the first people in the world that did see the, the brand new, new results. Uh, just to be sure, is everything okay? Uh, do you hear my voice and see my presentation? Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, here we go. Well, the title of my presentation is Air Transportation in Times of COVID-19, Spatial Organization and Its Changes. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, the currently ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic is uh, unprecedented, unprecedented global event. Uh, it, uh, since the end of 2019, our world has changed in many ways and our lives were changed uh, in many ways. So uh, one of the most significantly affected areas uh, of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic is uh, the air transportation. Yes, these are the four points of my presentation. Uh, the first is to discuss the importance of transportation in contemporary society. It means it's, it's a uh, it's a, a brief start uh, for my presentation. The second point is to discuss the general impacts of COVID-19 uh, pandemic on air transportation. Uh, the core of my presentation is there is then the, the third point. Um, uh, I want to, to or, or my talk is then an empirical study of global air transportation. Uh, for this study, uh, it means the, the changes um, uh, in times of COVID-19, I use the concept of uh, functional regions, functional regions. It means I study the changing patterns of air transportation uh, through the, the, the changes of functional regions. I think that this is a very uh, important um, geographical or, or spatial approach to, to study this issue. And the fourth point, of course, is uh, the last point is the discussion and some, some conclusions. Well, uh, we can start with a very simple question. What is the role uh, of transport or transportation in today's world? I think it's a very simple question, maybe even a little bit stupid because uh, all we know that transportation is uh, vital for our society. It's very important and uh, uh, we can uh, mention transportation as one of the most important human activity. Uh, every day, each of us participates in the process called spatial mobility. Uh, we need to move across the space and our world is uh, really connected with uh, the spatial mobility. Uh, it means uh, uh, it is for this reason that people do not find everything they want or need uh, in, in their surroundings. So uh, they are forced to, uh, to move across the space. Uh, what is very important that uh, spatial mobility, it means uh, the movements of people, of goods and information and capital and so on, are typical at all hierarchical scales in the world. It means from the local scale to the global one. We are moving across the space, and uh, this is uh, very important for our society and for our uh, world. Uh, mobility has been significantly paralyzed by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, all we know, but uh, still we can say uh, it is a very important and a significant human activity, despite these uh, restrictions uh, during the COVID uh, pandemic and so on. Well, uh, 
Similarly, we can assess that air transportation uh, is very important and vital for uh, our, our world and our society. It is one of the most important uh, transport mode or transportation modes, ensuring uh, transport relations over very long distances. This is uh, the, the, the basic uh, aspect of, of uh, the, the air transportation. Uh, this transportation mode, it means air transportation underpins uh, the global transport links. It's very important. It's, it supports uh, globalization processes and so on. Uh, this figure shows the intensity of air traffic in 2014. It means it's, little, uh, it's a little bit older, but uh, I think it, um, uh, it's uh, very important to assess uh, these, uh, these uh, elements or uh, these data uh, for our, our spatial or geographical analysis. Um, this figure shows uh, the number or uh, maybe the movements of aircrafts uh, in the world during uh, one day. It means it is 24 hour uh, period uh, in the world and each line represents one uh, aircraft moving from point A to point B. Uh, this uh, uh, picture shows the, the intensity and the importance of air transportation for our world. Uh, because all of us uh, are, are geographers, I think uh, it is very important to assess uh, the, the spatial arrangement of, of these uh, transport links. It means uh, we are, uh, we study the spatial differences, of course, uh, in geography, and uh, we can say, and uh, we can say there are three main cores of, of uh, air transportation in the world, North America, Europe, and Eastern Asia. It means this is the, 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 the global course of air transportation of uh, economic activities of population and so on. And uh, this is very important because uh, on the contrary, uh, we can see that uh, there are some parts of the world, they are not so strongly integrated in, into, the, into the global system of air transportation. Uh, for example, uh, South Africa or, uh, or the whole Africa, South America, central parts of Asia and so on. It is uh, logical that, that there are uh, differences but these inequalities are very important for assessing uh, the uh, transportation uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the world. So for this reason, uh, we can talk about uh, the great importance maybe of geographical or spatial approaches to, to, uh, to uh, assess uh, the air transportation and uh, so on. Well, uh, here are some uh, crucial uh, key aspects of uh, uh, air transportation, all we know that it is uh, one of the youngest and uh, one of the most dynamical transportation mode. Uh, it's, uh, it's focused on uh, transport, uh, transportation of people and goods on medium and uh, especially very long distances. And uh, this is uh, very important because uh, air transportation uh, underpins really underpins the, the uh, global uh, global uh, transport relations. Uh, of course, uh, uh, air transportation has a very um, or very important and very high environmental impacts. But uh, from the geographical or spatial point of view, it's very important uh, to mention that um, there is uh, uh, there were some processes. Uh, during a few last decades that uh, changed uh, the, the spatial arrangement of air transportation. For example, the concentration of air transportation, it means aircrafts and uh, air transportation links into the hubs. Uh, it means uh, there are some very important uh, airports in the world like Atlanta, like uh, Chicago, like uh, New York, like uh, Los Angeles uh, in Europe, for example, London, and so on, they are uh, forced to be uh, f to be um, airline hubs. It means this spatial concentration of um, of the air transportation links were uh, during the uh, last uh, decades one of the most important and uh, changes 
in, in the spatial organization of, of air transportation. And of course, there are uh, many uh, other processes like development of low cost airlines, like for example, Southwest Airlines in, uh, in the United States uh, in uh, 1970s, uh, creating of airline alliances and, and so on. It means these processes uh, shaped, maybe shaped uh, for a very long time, uh, changes or the spatial arrangement of air transportation. And of course, last, uh, last but not least, we can mention that uh, air transportation is uh, vulnerable, is very vulnerable transportation modes to, to uh, many various external influences. Well, uh, this uh, slide uh, shows uh, the, the dynamic uh, development of air transportation over uh, the last few decades, or maybe since the, since the second world war. Uh, as you can see, air transportation was, uh, or the, the, the development was very dynamic uh, since, uh, or in, in the 21st century. But for example, uh, yet from uh, the 1970s, you can see some uh, increasing of, uh, of uh, passenger carried by, by air transportation. Um, we can say that there are some major internal and external factors influencing this development. Uh, for example, if we mention the external factors, uh, it means it's a uh, relatively favorable economic situation in the world, uh, development of tourism and so on, and many other processes that, that shaped or influenced positively the, the development of air transportation. Uh, but uh, there are, of course, also uh, the internal factors. It means the internal factors within the, the air transportation industry. It means uh, liberalization or the deregulation of air transportation uh, uh, or more uh, fuel efficient aircrafts and so on. However, what can we observe? Uh, we can observe that the general development uh, of air transportation has been slowed down during some certain points or periods like oil crisis, iron, uh, iron war, uh, war, Gulf crisis, and so on. Uh, it is clear, however, that uh, there has uh, always been a slowdown, temporarily, maybe slowdown, in the development of air transportation, which has been compensated by uh, a large increases in next years, in subsequent years. It means, uh, for example, the terrorist attack uh, and so on, it, it's only a slowdown of air transportation as, as the global, global transport mode. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic is different, it's completely different. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's an unprecedented um, uh, intervention in uh, the air transportation and its development in, in the world. Um, well, now uh, maybe we will now turn to a completely different issue uh, because as I have mentioned, uh, my uh, approach is based on uh, the, the assessment of functional regions of delimitation and assessment of uh, functional regions. So now only a few words, uh, a few theoretical words about, about regions and especially functional regions because they are very important for, for us now. Uh, generally we can say, and uh, all of us are geographers, so probably you know that uh, there are uh, a few types of regions, but generally we can say uh, there are two main types of regions, formal regions and functional regions. While the formal regions uh, are typical or maybe more typical for physical geography because uh, they, uh, they work with homogeneous uh, structures and so on, and they are formed mainly by uh, vertical relations. Uh, functional regions are different. They are uh, organized by relations, by spatial relations, by spatial interactions and so on. So uh, the functional regions are uh, different and maybe we can say they are more typical for uh, human geography. Uh, probably uh, all we know that uh, the 
basic type maybe of functional regions are uh, the nodal regions. It means uh, regions, they are organized uh, through the flows to specific nodal, uh, nodal nodes uh, within the, the regions. Typical uh, types of nodal regions are, for example, travel to work areas or daily urban systems, uh, commuting uh, to work uh, regions and so on. Uh, it is uh, very important to mention that uh, I work uh, with uh, the term functional regions. It means uh, I'm trying to, de uh, to delimitate or define uh, functional regions <clears throat> based on the data uh, of uh, from air transportation. <clears throat> uh, <sorry. clears throat> I'm back. Uh, well, uh, what is uh, very important in, in a theoretical basis of functional regions, uh, there are some, of course, some rules how to delimitate, how to define the functional regions. And the first and maybe the most important principle is the, is the, uh, is the regional autonomy principle. It means uh, when def defining uh, functional regions, the rule is uh, that the internal flows within the functional regions uh, should be uh, more important and stronger than the external flows. It means from the region uh, uh, to another regions and so on. This is the regional autonomy principle and it is very uh, important to mention it be, uh, because it's very important for our uh, research and for, for, for the results. Well, uh, if we, uh, if we uh, define or uh, delimitate uh, the functional regions, uh, we have to, uh, we, have uh, or the, the typical uh, features of uh, functional regions are internal coherence of regions. It means these internal flows are more important uh, within the region and the external closure. It means the closeness of the region, uh, what is, uh, which is very important uh, to, uh, to uh, the autonomy and uh, maybe the, the existence of the functional regions uh, and so on. Uh, as you can see that uh, the functional regions can be uh, or are maybe different or there are many forms of, uh, of the functional regions and the, the character maybe of the relations within the region are uh, different. Random regions or uh, random interactions, oriented interactions, channeled, uh, circular and the point E nodal uh, are very typical. And uh, I think the most um, common, uh, the most common interactions that shapes uh, the functional regions. It means node, there is one node, one core uh, within the, the region, one or more uh, uh, core within the region. And the other parts of the region are attached maybe by the intensity of spatial interactions. To, to one or more uh, cores. It is very important to, to mention that uh, the nodal regions uh, should be uh, with uh, one core, but uh, very often they are, uh, they are functional or nodal regions with uh, more cores. It means a multi, uh, it's, uh, it's a multiple uh, core uh, regions. Well, and uh, this is uh, the main and basic point for my research. It means uh, I have the air transportation. I know that they, uh, they, uh, there are uh, a few uh, movements, a few interactions. Uh, they are um, uh, supported or, or based on air transportation on one hand. And on the other hand, uh, I have the functional regions with all the principles like regional autonomy and so on. And my approach is uh, based on, on uh, merging or connecting these, these two elements in, into one uh, structure maybe. So uh, what about the previous research? Uh, uh, I have a little advantage because uh, me and my colleagues, uh, we published uh, a few studies on, on, the, on this issue uh, earlier. 
this study uh, is uh, from 2020. It, it was published in uh, the Geographical Journal and it's based on the data from 2014. So uh, we had a database about uh, move, uh, movements of aircrafts uh, among all civil airports in the world uh, from 2014. Uh, it's only one day, it, it means it, it's only a snapshot, uh, only one day snapshot of, of, the, of, the state, of, the, of this state. But uh, it, uh, of, of, we used this data for uh, delimitate the, the, the global regions. Uh, we can see on this picture, on this map, uh, the intensity of uh, movement of uh, aircrafts uh, among uh, the, the all uh, civil, uh, civil airports in the world. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can confirm there are three main global cores of, uh, of uh, air transportation. It means North America, uh, Europe, and Eastern Asia. And they are very uh, strongly uh, interconnected. It means within uh, the systems of uh, North America, Europe, and so on. And of course, uh, each other it, with, with the, the other are uh, interconnected too. So, um, and also, we can confirm that there are some peripheral regions that they are not so strongly integrated into this system, uh, like uh, South America, like Africa, and like uh, many, many uh, uh, other parts of Asia. Uh, next point, what is very important and uh, what um, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit, uh, I was a little bit surprised of uh, the interconnection between Europe and uh, North America. As you can see, the, the, uh, in the intensity of, uh, of this movement, uh, movement of aircrafts between uh, North America and uh, Europe is much more uh, stronger than between, for example, uh, North America and uh, Asia, or for example, between uh, Europe and uh, Eastern, Eastern Asia. Uh, the third point, uh, uh, what is very important, that is, is the is this space uh, uh, maybe between between uh, Europe and Eastern Asia. It means there are a few airports, like for example Dubai in the United Arab uh, Emirates, uh, or uh, for example. Istanbul in Turkey or uh, India and so on. It is a very interesting space uh, because uh, there is there are maybe some fights between uh, or among these these regions uh, or uh, airports uh, or of the sphere, sphere of influence in, in, in this in this area. Well, uh, we had this database uh, or it, it was uh, of course much much uh, richer this database. I think, uh, in my opinion, there were 67,000 uh, interactions. It means 67,000 uh, flights among this, this, uh, this uh, four, or mm, yes, for uh, among 3,000 airports uh, in, in the world. Uh, it, means it is from the year 2014. And uh, we uh, had these database and we used uh, some you know, regular approach approach to, to define the functional regions. It means uh, this is the, this is the, the, the results of, of the previous study. We uh, have used uh, some uh, interaction measures to uh, delimitate, to define uh, the, the, uh, the global regions. And this is the reason. This is the result. Uh, we uh, find out there are 11, 11 systems uh, of uh, airports uh, in the world, and they are inter interconnected, and so on. Each regions, uh, each region fulfills the, the, the criteria of regional autonomy. It means they are interconnected, and the internal flows are much more uh, stronger than the external flows. Uh, for example, uh, if we uh, focus our attention on, on America, 
uh, we can say there are three main uh, main systems. Uh, the first and uh, maybe the, the largest system is uh, is the red system uh, is shaped by very strong uh, airports in uh, in the central and uh, eastern part of, of the United States, and the um, busiest airport here is Atlanta. No, no surprise, of course, no no surprise. Uh, but this is the first system and very strong and, and very, very stable system. The second is uh, around the LAX. It means uh, the, uh, the Western part of, of the USA, uh, the, this, this yellow system uh, with um, uh, a few, uh, a few uh, airports and uh, Los Angeles uh, LAX uh, was uh, the, the busiest airport, airport here. Uh, South America was uh, not so weak, maybe, uh, sorry, not so strong, uh, but uh, it, it's a, it's a uh, region with Sao Paulo as the leading maybe airport uh, in, in South America. It means uh, uh, it's, it's not a typical, typical nodal region. It means it does not, uh, it, it doesn't mean that uh, Sao Paulo is, is the only hub or uh, the main hub in, in the system, within the system. It means these region, uh, these airports are interconnected uh, very well uh, and they are very intensively interconnected. And Sao Paulo is the, the busiest airport. It's the greatest or the, the busiest airport. Maybe the situation in Europe is uh, more uh, difficult and more interesting because Europe maybe is divided into two or three systems. Uh, the leading position in, uh, in Europe uh, was in 2014 uh, by London Heathrow as, as the global and the leading hub uh, in, in Europe. But the second was Paris in, in France as, as the second uh, most important system. Uh, as you can see this, uh, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's not pink, it's uh, violet maybe, uh, a color uh, that uh, the system of Paris and uh, uh, this functional region is typical for France, for uh, Spain and for many uh, other uh, airports in, in Africa, in, in uh, Western Africa and so on. It means <clears throat> they are former colonies of, of uh, France uh, from the 18 and, uh, sorry, 19th and 20th century. So these airports in Africa, in Western Africa are still connected uh, especially with Paris and uh, with, with these, these uh, airports. And then Moscow uh, and Russia, uh, it seems it is uh, very close uh, within the, the Russian Federation. It means uh, almost all uh, Russian airports are connected within one system, within one system. This is very, very, very uh, interesting. Um, and uh, next, uh, I, I know that uh, the, the time is running out, but uh, uh, I can mention, for example, Dubai. Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, as you can see, this is the pink color. Uh, you can see that uh, this is very uh, interesting and very successful airport, I think, because uh, the, the uh, sphere of influence is typical uh, for uh, not uh, for for the Middle East maybe, but also for uh, southern or uh, eastern parts of Africa. It means these these uh, um, airports are uh, connected with uh, with Dubai. Dubai is a, is a novice maybe in in this in this category and so on. Time is running out, so uh, I will switch to another slide because. Uh, the purpose of my talk is uh, current situation and not know the historic situation. So uh, this is uh, the previous study and uh, this is the, the results uh, that uh, we wanted to um, maybe make uh, with uh, or uh, based on this uh, data from uh, pre-COVID era and uh, COVID era, it means from 2019 and 2020. Yes, there are some, uh, some uh, structural features. It is uh, also from, from the previous study, uh, but uh, as you can see, they are, there are uh, 
at least a London Heathrow and Atlanta, it means that the uh, European and the American systems are the most important, are the busiest in the world. Uh, almost 200 airports are within these uh, systems. And uh, I can mention and point out the, the last uh, column uh, in, this, in this table, it's called self-containment. It's a measure for closeness of, of, of the region. Why, uh, for example, as you can see, the highest self-containment is typical for Sao Paulo. It means the systems, uh, the system of airports uh, within uh, South America, and they are very close, very close uh, within in one one unit. Uh, conversely, for example, Paris or um, Los Angeles. They are uh, very open. You know, it, it means uh, the self-containment is, is very uh, low, and it means they, they are opened. They are opened and they connect to uh, maybe uh, not only airports within its area, but also with other airports and systems over the world. Uh, yes, this is the last picture from, from the previous study, I, I promise. Uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, schematic, uh, uh, I don't know, visualization of, of um, uh, world airline hubs. Uh, what is very important, we find out that Atlanta, as uh, the busiest airport in, in the world, is uh, not a typical world airline hub. Maybe this is this is uh, shocking information for you, but uh, one of the uh, in most important uh, criterion for delimitation of world airline hubs or world airline hub airports was uh, the, sh the share of long haul flights. It means long haul flights. We find uh, uh, we find uh, out that uh, Atlanta had uh, I think seven or. 8%, only 7 or 8% of long haul flights uh, to, to, to serve. It means Atlanta is very strong and, and very uh, busy airport, but it serves uh, mainly as a hub within the, the system uh, in, in North America. Uh, so uh, we delimitated or we find out that there are, there are five main uh, global airline hubs, New York, London, Paris, Dubai, and Tokyo. Uh, all of them, uh, the share, for example, of long haul flights were above uh, 40 or 50 percent. It means this is uh, completely different uh, comparing with, with Atlanta. Well, uh, let's move to the current research and, and uh, to, to this uh, uh, brand new uh, results that uh, uh, they are based in, on, on this uh, period, it means 2019 and 2020. Well, uh, some information about data and methods. Uh, we worked with another database. Uh, the previous research, uh, as I have mentioned, was based uh, on data of movement of aircrafts. It means how many aircrafts flew from uh, point A to point B. But this time we used another database. It's from ICAO and it's called uh, On Flight Origin and Destination. It means it's uh, about uh, it's about passengers. How many passengers flew from uh, Tokyo to uh, I don't know um, to Kuala Lumpur, for example? And uh, this is maybe more correct for delimitation of of uh, functional regions. Uh, well, uh, we had a number of all passengers among all civil airports uh, over the world in 2019 and 2020. Um, 2019 was a year uh, of the pre-COVID uh, era. Um, and as you can see, there are more than uh, 28,000 interactions. It means city uh, from one city to uh, another city. And they are uh, to, uh, more than 2,000 uh, cities in this database. Uh, 2020, uh, the situation was uh, more complicated. Uh, it was, of course, uh, influenced by the COVID-19 pandemic, and there, is, there was some decrease, and uh, there are only, only uh, 17,000 interactions, it means city versus city, and, uh, and above 1,700 uh, 1, cities. There is the SMARTS interaction measure, 
which we used for uh, for delimitate of of this region uh, of these regions. It, it, it's uh, it's uh, I think it's a um, advanced method uh, based on uh, spatial interaction modeling. Uh, maybe you know that there are some there are some gravity models in geography, and uh, this uh, this model is an advanced method how to delimitate uh, the the regions. It means uh, it uh, works with the internal and external flows. It means with the, with the regional uh, autonomy and with the regional principle. So this is the smart interaction measure, and this and this uh, interaction measure we used for analyzing this data. Well, let's move uh, to the to the main result. This is the situation in 2019. It means uh, uh, pre-COVID pandemic. Uh, we find out that uh, our previous research was uh, was uh, or, or the situation is uh, similar to uh, to the situation uh, in 2014 and uh, compared with uh, with a different of course database uh, we find out that uh, the situation uh, in 2004 uh, 2019 uh, we can say there are 10 10 systems 10 systems in the world and uh, they shaped maybe the, this uh, this um, uh, airline or, or the uh, moving of passengers uh, through the air transportation. Uh, the greatest system or the largest system maybe uh, is uh, the Atlanta system, as as you can see the the, the blue color, uh, what uh, which is very important for um, this uh, south uh, east part of uh, of the United States. And for Hall, typical for Hall, um, Latin America. And uh, it means this system is also interconnected in one system. And Atlanta, of course, is, is the busiest airport or was in 2019, the busiest airport in the world. Uh, the second system is called New York, of course, and it, it's, uh, it's shaped by the airports in, this, uh, in the north uh, eastern part of the United States. And uh, as you can see, some Caribbean airports are uh, very well connected with, uh, with New York uh, and its airports, because uh, all we know that uh, there are uh, a few airports in, in, in New York. And the last system is uh, shaped by Los Angeles. It means uh, this uh, central part or, and the, eastern, uh, the western coast sorry, for, uh, of uh, the United States are interconnected in one system. So maybe, again, no surprise, uh, but uh, compared to the, the previous research, uh, we can mention that Sao Paulo and the whole uh, region of, of South America is connected with one in one system with uh, Atlanta. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know, Miami, of course, uh, as, as you can see and so on. And this situation in Europe is, uh, is uh, maybe similar or maybe, uh, yes, it, it's similar, uh, but there is only one system within maybe the most of, of uh, Europe and its uh, busiest airport is a, in London. Uh, what is uh, maybe a little bit surprising is is the the grow, grow, is the yes is the grow, uh, grow situation in Istanbul in, in Turkey. As you can see, this uh, red color, uh, we can say that uh, Istanbul as as a very good to, or very advanced uh, global hub uh, makes uh, some uh, successful uh, successful operations here. And uh, as you can see, some even some airports in Europe and in Africa are uh, connected within this this systems uh, within this this system. And then, of course, uh, another uh, another airports. Uh, for example, Istanbul is of course made or shaped by Turkish Airlines. Turkish Airlines as a, a, one of the most dynamical airlines a, 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 in the world. Of course, Addis Abeba in Ethiopia, Ethiopia is uh, made by Ethiopian Airlines. It means 
these uh, strong airlines supports supports maybe the, the, the development of these systems of and uh, these apps. Also, it is difficult for for Dubai as uh, Emirates and uh, Etihad Airways and so on. Mm, so this is the situation in 2019. Uh, and uh, if we switch to the year, to the very critical year of 2020, so you can see the, the main changes. I can switch it uh, a few times. 2019, 2020. 2019, 2020. Again, a few, a few comparison, uh, comparisons. Uh, this is what is made or what was made uh, within the, the system of air transportation. What is very important, uh, for example, if you concentrate on the size of airports, it means, of course, it correlates with uh, the number of passengers, uh, of uh, carried passengers. Uh, sorry, uh, we can compare that there are the, mm, the American airports are uh, influenced by the COVID-19 relatively a very, very low or, or, or on, a, on a low level. It means uh, they are, of course, they are decreasing. All of them are decreasing, but this decrease is not so important and not so strong like in other areas in the world. For example, if you, if you uh, watch uh, the, the changes uh in in europe or in asia and this is uh, this is um, interesting i think well uh what uh, what changes uh, are there uh if it's you can see in 2020 there is only one system in north america and uh, it's uh, with with a leading uh, airport in atlanta it means it seems that uh, it seems it, it's only only uh, thinking uh, but uh, it seems that these national restrictions and uh, closure of um, uh, or a lockdown maybe and closure of uh, the, the internal uh, borders uh, it seems that uh, America uh, with some uh, some airports from Caribbean uh, area and Mexico and so on are uh, within one system. As so you can see these changes in South America uh, that uh, this um, system, system of Atlanta here and here dropped out uh, or, or was destroyed. And uh, this, uh, these um, airports in, in South America uh, were uh, uh, within one uh, particular system of, of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Maybe completely different situation was in Europe. There is, uh, for example, in, in, uh, in the United States, there is some unifying in one unit uh, called Atlanta region. But in, in Europe, there are two main uh, systems, uh, London Heathrow uh, or London again, and very strong position of Amsterdam in uh, Netherlands. Uh, Amsterdam ship hall, maybe it's a rather smaller, but very important, very important airport here. Also, uh, Turkey is a little bit stable. And if you, uh, if you concentrate on Africa, you can see that Addis Abeba and uh, many, uh, many airports in Africa are again uh, connected within one system with Dubai. Because Dubai and uh, the, especially the Emirates uh, Airlines, uh, made of course some restrictions uh, during the 20, uh, 2020 uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. But, but they uh, still uh, made these these connections uh, for uh, uh, maybe uh, it was it was relatively stable. If you concentrate, for example, on Australia you can see a uh, similar tendency that there is new region, new system 
uh, with Sydney, uh, with Sydney and a few airports within Australia were connected in one in one unit. Uh, again, uh, within the the state or internal borders of uh, of uh, Australia and so on. Well, I think the time is running up, so so, so I don't want to uh, to to be boring and. Uh, uh, as I have mentioned, and um, uh, I have to apologize for it, these results are very, uh, very uh, fresh, maybe, because uh, these, uh, uh, these maps were made yesterday. So it's, it's very, it's very uh, fresh, uh, this, this state. So uh, I can maybe, yes, I can uh, make some conclusions and very briefly, uh, say uh, about about the main changes for uh, for me. Uh, of course, again, we can conclude that uh, there are there were substantial changes in air transportation under the influence of COVID nineteen. Uh, many studies uh, uh, declared that there is significant decline in air transportation performance between 2019 as a um, year of maximum uh, mobility and maximum development of air transportation and 2020, which was uh, the, the worst year maybe in, in a modern history for air transportation. But uh, in my point of view, it is very important uh, to assess not only these, uh, you know, absolute data and absolute uh, changes, but also the, the, the relative changes and the internal or structural changes in spatial organization of our transportation. What can we uh, say on our conclude? Uh, we can conclude that there was a significant breakdown in the functional structure of the air transportation layers. It means there, there were uh, in uh, 2019, there were some uh, stable functional regions and uh, we can suppose that they were relatively stable in history. And now this situation is different, not completely different, but partially it's, uh, it's different because some state or and uh, some states and uh, made made some uh, restrictions, and they were closed in one in one systems in one in one uh, maybe in one state uh, borders and so on. Some world regions have been isolated, like uh, for example Australia or again South America. It means uh, these changes were uh, very str very uh, very strongly influence the, these uh, internal structures of, of these, of these uh, systems. In contrast, uh, some regions have been integrated into a single entity, for example, North, North America, uh, as, uh, uh, we, uh, as we watched uh, in, in this map, that uh, North America is, uh, was unified maybe in one, in one system. The strategies of individual carriers were clearly influenced by its state uh, restrictions. It means the state restrictions uh, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, and it seems that the current situation is very similar in 2021, uh, were uh, unprecedented interventions in, in, in the functional structure of air transportation. Uh, I think, uh, or, for, and uh, at least for me, it's an in interesting research topic. And the next step is, of course, to analyze 2021. Well, 60 minutes. Just 60 minutes. Thank you very much for your attention. And I'm, I'm ready for, for discussion and your, your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do have, can I go first? Uh, Jose, do you have any questions? Uh, can I hear you? Yeah, I, I have questions, but go ahead. Okay, cool. Can you just go back to this like functional rules, like the term functional rules you classified for 2019? Why you classify like this term, why term is like... I'm sorry? Why you only term classifications, term groups, term uh, functional yes. rules? Uh, yes, because the smart interaction measure uh, is uh, it's a typical quantitative method, 
and uh, the the criteria uh, are the closeness of, of the region. So, so uh, you have to uh, write some uh, some uh, line or border of close uh, closeness of the regions, and we. Um, we used the same criteria as uh, here in 2014. Okay. You know, so, okay, okay. So, uh, despite these data are different because uh, passengers uh, and uh, the, the, then were uh, the, the uh, aircrafts, but we used the same criteria to, to, to use it and to, to try to, to, to delimit these regions. Is it impossible to like separate the domestic lines and international lines and just redo this like functional original analysis? Maybe like uh, for international lines, just different type of functional regions. For domestic lines, just another story. Is that possible? Uh, yes, no, no, uh, we uh, we didn't uh, differ the, the domestic and the international flights because uh, you know uh, in, in this uh, time it, it's it's very complicated to to uh, differ differ because uh, all of uh, these passengers or these passengers can use the, this this uh, flights or uh, even domestic or or international so it's combined combined to, together. I guess just separate to different groups maybe help to deliver your story, like the changing of functional regions. Yes, uh, as, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a very, uh, very uh, f f fresh, fresh data and results for me. So uh, maybe um, I, I need some time to, to, uh, to understand uh, all of, uh, of these uh, elements and uh, of course, uh, and at least, uh, for example, when I'm, uh, I'll when I will be, uh, I'll will uh, prepare the paper. So this this would be uh, this would be perfect. So sorry, uh, it's it's really uh, brand brand new research. So and uh, I have two questions from uh, Professor Stoller. Uh, the first one is about like what are the, the prospects of linking this data to economic data to understand the consequences or maybe new regionalization patterns. Can I say this? Just in the chat, in the chat box. The question from Professor Justin Stoller. Yeah, yes, uh, what are the prospects of linking these data to economic data, understand the consequences? Uh, maybe uh, I'm, I'm not uh, able to, to, to answer now because uh, yes, it's, I think it's, uh, of course, it's connected uh, with uh, uh, this uh, economic uh, situation, but it was really very uh, different and very complicated during the 2020, because uh, it was, uh, it was um, or some restrictions and so on were, were made um, very dramatically and so on. But these data economic understand consequences of new regionalization patterns. It's it's hard to say uh, now for, for, for me. So this is uh, maybe this is the answer. And my these new patterns have implications for air pollution or other local environmental effects. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is a very interesting question. Um, I hope so because uh, it uh, must uh, correlate with uh, these data are uh, about about moving passengers and it, it must correlate with uh, with the with the with the movement of aircrafts. So I'm convinced that these these uh, environmental effects have or the, these effects and these changes uh, even uh, these data are or this approach is, is a little bit different because it's not about the absolute data, it's, it's about relative data. But as you can see, as uh, you can see from, from uh, this, these pictures, uh, there are some um, declined, declines of uh, um, passenger traffic uh, on uh, particular airports. So maybe there are some 
implication, but <laughs> um, uh, this this uh, air pollution or local environmental effects are are yes, it's it's a, it's a good question and for 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 uh, for maybe for a few future research. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Stella, I, I have a question. I have okay. a question. One, it's uh, in the beginning of your presentation, you talk about formal regions and functional regions. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I think formal regions, if you assume that formal regions are political regions defined by law, that's yes. a good way to start. <laughs> and functional regions are regions that are defined by flows. And sometimes the functional regions, they are the same than the formal regions, but sometimes they are not. That's okay? true. So let's That's start true. with that. <laughs> okay. And based on, on uh, your data set, what I saw was before the pandemic, uh, the formal regions didn't match the functional regions, okay? You could okay. see that, for example, United States, that's a formal region. There was three different functional regions and each, each one of these functional regions had a different dynamic. I think it's the uh -huh. same in other parts of the world. Okay. And uh, what I see happening during the pandemic is it's that the functional regions match <laughs> the formal <laughs> regions. Yes, yeah, that's true. That's true. Because of the national laws, the, the national constraints that have been put in order to control the pandemics. So I think if you do this kind of analysis, you know, to try to define formal regions and compare with functional regions and see how they change over time, maybe that's a way to go. And I think it's going to be easy to explain all the <laughs> different changes that you are that uh, that that's in some way is connected to to the to the policies that the country is using to constrain mm -hmm. uh, the expansion of COVID. Okay, Thank what you. do you think about that? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, but maybe you are right. It's an interesting point of view because I uh, always uh, um, I always uh, always think about or only functional regions. But <laughs> that's true that uh, these uh, these types uh, two types of regions uh, maybe on this data set uh, should be uh, unifying or merging. So it's it's interesting. Thank you. So uh, just, just last one question, actually. Just I'm just curious, but what, what about your other status right now in, in track in, in Eastern European countries? So uh, you had say so I'm just curious about the status of geography, the discipline of geography mm -hmm. in track actually in the Eastern European countries. So can you just introduce a little bit about like this your national society of track, how many members you have? Do you have any like issues or problems by like recruiting students, just telling them what is geography? Do you have uh, like okay? So you mean the Czech Geographical Society? Yes. Okay. And, and, uh, and actually the status of geography in like educating system of, of track. Okay, so uh, maybe okay. Uh, uh, maybe we can talk uh, later about, about face to face. But uh, I, I can I can mention some some points. Of, well, the Czech Geographical Society. Uh, we have I've approximately only five hundred. Yes, five hundred uh, members. But uh, we can say that uh, in in the Czech Republic. Is so one. Uh, it's the oldest um, association, a scientific association, uh, because it was founded in 1894. 1894. It means, uh, and since that time, uh, it is uh, yes, it is the the the, the oldest uh, scientific uh, company, maybe uh, in uh, or association uh, here in the Czech Republic, and since that time. We um, um, we publish uh, uh, 
journal called Geografie, Geography in, in Czech Geografie. And uh, it's it's on web of science, so maybe you, you can you can watch uh, or see uh, see it or watch uh, the, the website of it. And uh, the, the 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 second part of, of the question, I think, is it's uh, for for a um, you know, long discussion maybe of, uh, about about uh, geography and and in Central or Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, I feel I still feel. It's a little bit different from, from, for example, U.S. or French or or um, British geography, because uh, for a very long time it was um, <coughs> shaped by by the communist uh, regime. Uh, it means it means uh, during the second half of uh, the 20th century. So some uh, topics and some approaches uh, were eliminated. I think. Uh, for example, I don't know the, uh, this, uh, you know, uh, environmental uh, approaches in, in geography or time geography. Uh, it was uh, not so common, uh, but the socialist or, or communist geography, uh, because we uh, had a, a, a great pattern with uh, in Russian geography or Soviet geography, so it was. Uh, very strongly influenced and focused on economic issues. So uh, economic geography was uh, the, the, for a very long time, for a very long time, uh, had a leading position uh, within the Czech and uh, all other uh, socialist or post-socialist geographies. Thank you. Okay. I guess that yeah, will be all. <laughs> okay, I hope I, I will visit Miami next week, but there is an, a new restriction since uh, uh, because I have rebooked my, my flight on 7th December, but since the 6th December there is a new rule uh, because of the Omicron or, or I, I don't know uh, the, the pronunciation of the new uh, variant of coronavirus, so uh, I hope I, I, will, I will go to Miami ne next, next week. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Stanislaw. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was uh, very, very great uh, and and uh, kind for me to to be be here. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you all okay. for coming and enjoying us. Enjoying us. Uh, <laughs> all right. I guess. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So see you uh, next week. Hopefully. <laughs> thank you very much. So see you. Bye.